就是个废物。In a crowd in the middle of a city street, people were welcoming the arrival of a person named Lin Yao, accompanied by his assistant Lin Zi and an entourage from his village. A stage was opened there to hold an inter-district kung fu tournament. Lin Yao was one of the best kung fu fighters in his area, so he was sent as a representative. Long story short, Lin Yao won the tournament and made Lin Zi very proud. Later at home, Lin Yao asked his father Lin Jingtang for a free day because he had been fighting for a whole year, but his father instead told him to train so he could be much stronger. In the evening, Lin Jingtang looked annoyed because the finances in his house were very poor. Not to mention, Lin Zi kept persuading him to let Lin Yao go to Shanghai because he wanted to fight with martial arts athletes from abroad. In the evening, Lin Yao vented his anger by slamming pots in front of the house. Then, after he had calmed down, Qin approached him and tried to comfort him. She said that Lin Yao was a true warrior because without him, she would have been eaten by wild animals. Besides, he could still train for kung fu. She hoped that Lin Yao would forgive his father and focus on training again. On the other hand, the resident started working for Li Baimi in Lin's former family's house. Apparently. Li Baimi had been eyeing that house for a long time because he heard a rumor that there was a treasure buried there. Bao also worked for him because he was promised a lot of money. While Bao was resting, he talked about Lin Yao, who was living a miserable life in a remote place. Lin Zi, who happened to be passing by, was immediately shocked when he found out that Lin Yao was still alive. So he immediately asked Bao for the location. Meanwhile, Lin Yao was still angry with his father. Seeing that Lin Jingtang told him the reason why he was willing to pay the fighters so that his son would look great. Back then, Lin Yao's mother's family was the heir to high kung fu, which made everyone want to kill them. During the Japanese colonial era in China, his mother fought for the independence of the country, but she had to die at the Japanese hands. Because of that, his aunt, who was also a kung fu expert, immediately killed the invaders by disguising herself as a prostitute. Since that day, Lin Jingtang promised to protect his son from danger, so that he didn't suffer the same fate as his mother. Therefore, he paid the fighters to pretend to be weak when fighting with Lin Yao. But then he realized that this actually made his son look like a loser. In the end, they finally made up. Lin Yao then apologized to his aunt because he never knew what she had suffered all this time, and this time he was determined to inherit the kung fu moves that belonged to his family. Apparently. The move in question was the drunken fighting style, where this move relies on the flexibility of the body and the breathing technique. Apart from that, this move was also often used to trick the enemy. His aunt immediately trained him with great perseverance, starting from the basic techniques for drinking wine to the movements. On the other hand, Li Baimi and Lao were monitoring the workers, but after three months of digging the ground near the house, they still couldn't find the treasure. Bao and his friends then found something buried. Seeing this, Lin Zi rushed to report it to Li Baimi. When they checked, the object found wasn't a treasure, and as a result, they were told to dig again. Bao apparently was brave enough to put up a fight. He brought up the issue of workers' salaries not being paid, and when there was no positive response from Li Baimi, he decided to rebel. But unfortunately, he died at the hands of Li Baimi in their fight. That night, Lin Zi secretly left Li Baimi's place to meet Lin Yao at his aunt's house. When he got there, he knelt and apologized for his betrayal, and this time he was ready to do anything to atone for his sins. He then told everyone about Li Baimi's cruelty in forcing residents to work hard to find the buried treasure in their house. Apart from that, Li Baimi also conspired with the Japanese to kill all the workers after he managed to find the treasure. Initially, Lin Yao didn't believe him because he had betrayed him, but Qin confirmed the truth because she had found out about Li Baimi's plan from Lao. Hearing that, Lin Yao was finally convinced. Meanwhile, Li Baimi's men were seen torturing the workers who were lazing around. They kept forcing them so that they could get the treasure they were targeting. Not long after that, one of the workers found gold bars behind a rock. Li Baimi felt happy because his goal had been achieved. He then ordered his men to tie up all the workers because he no longer needed them. Apart from that, he also directed his men to move the gold that had been found. Not long after, Lin Yao and Lin Zi finally got there to release the workers, but they were confronted by dozens of swordsmen. Luckily, Qin and the aunt helped them fight, so Lin Yao and Lin Zi were able to secure the other residents who were still tied. Lin Yao beat the other guards without the slightest hesitation. Unfortunately, Li Baimi was able to attack Lin Yao's vital points, making it difficult for him to move his body optimally. On the other hand, Qin and the aunt were still struggling with the swordsmen. 
while Lin Zi was trying to save the residents who were still tied. Not wanting to waste time, Lin Yao got up and attacked Li Baimi with the rest of his strength, but even though he had tried as hard as he could, Li Baimi was hard to bring down, and in the end, he had to admit defeat. But when his strength was almost gone, he pretended to faint in front of Li Baimi. He then used the drunken fighting style which shocked Li Baimi. Thanks to that move, he was finally able to defeat Li Baimi. Unfortunately, before Li Baimi breathed his last breath, he managed to fire the explosive fuse so that he could kill everyone. Lin Zi, who saw this immediately jumped towards the explosive to sacrifice himself, but surprisingly the fuse was extinguished because he peed his pants. At the end of the movie, Lin Yao intended to go to Shanghai secretly, but it turned out that Lin Jingtang had found out about this. He allowed his son to go there as long as he didn't cause trouble. Lin Yao was then accompanied by Lin Zi and the residents to the village gate, indicating that they considered him a hero after what he had done to them. Moreover, all the gold found had been donated to the needy. After that, Lin Yao invited Qin to come with him, but he strongly opposed this idea. He said that his son could have fun as long as he didn't go to Shanghai. Lin Yao immediately went to the casino after hearing that. It turned out that apart from being good at fighting, he was also very skilled at gambling. Even his opponents complained because he didn't give them the slightest chance of winning. After that, Lin Yao tried to find opponents who wanted to play with him again. But then he got bored, so he and Lin Zi left the casino to look for fun elsewhere. They were then stopped by a beggar who asked for money, and even though Lin Yao looked arrogant, he was quite generous. Without him realizing it, someone watching him from a distance. Shortly after, the two arrived at a brothel. Among the many women, Lin Yao was attracted to a very charming woman named Qin. However, it turned out that Qin was only there to play traditional musical instruments, not to give a service. Not long after that, a man named Zheng offered a fairly high price to pay Qin. Of course, Lin Yao didn't want to lose and suddenly offered a higher price. This surprised the brothel manager called the madam because Qin wasn't for sale, but even so, the two were fighting over each other, until finally, a fistfight could not be avoided. Luckily, the fight was stopped before things got too far. Zheng then threatened to kill Lin Yao if they met again. Meanwhile, Lin Yao still paid a high price to be accompanied by Qin. Not wanting to refuse the money, the madam accepted it and told Qin to immediately accompany Lin Yao, but Wen instead left there and made the madam angry. Even though Qin refused, Lin Yao didn't stop. He kept waiting for her. He even went to the brothel every day. He was also willing to get caught in the rain to be noticed by the woman he adored. Seeing this, Qin finally melted and took Lin Yao to her room. In that room, Qin made a drink to warm Lin Yao's body. But Lin Yao couldn't drink it because of the prohibition from his Kung Fu teacher. As a result, the two of them were just chatting. Qin was ready to serve Lin Yao because she had been paid to do that. But Lin Yao refused and said that he had no intention of using her at all. That he just wanted to have a healthy relationship with her. When Lin Yao returned home, he was scolded by his father because he suddenly asked permission to marry Qin, especially since this woman worked in a brothel while Lin Yao had royal blood. Apart from that, his aunt also criticized his unreasonable desires. Lin Jingtang was so angry that she told Lin Zi to block all of Lin Yao's bank accounts. Lin Zi, who didn't like their arguments, incited Lin Yao to elope. He then reported to Lin Jingtang that his son wanted to elope, and so that Lin Yao wouldn't do it. Lin Zi suggested that he invite fighters from abroad to stop Lin Yao, this way he wouldn't be able to go with Qin. Somewhere else, Lin Yao wanted to meet Qin to discuss something, but then he heard Qin screaming. Lin Yao rushed to save her. After defeating the man, Lin Yao realized that the man was Zheng. Qin panicked because she accidentally stabbed Zheng to death. Seeing that, Lin Yao tried to calm her down and said that she was not at all wrong. She didn't commit violence but rather an act of self-defense. Lin Yao then met the owner of the brothel, a man named Lao. He said he would take Qin at any price, so Lao invited him to gamble at the casino, and if Lin Yao won then he could take Qin away. Unfortunately, Lin Yao didn't have the money to bet so he promised to pay Lao double the winnings. Besides, he was sure he would win the game, only to be beaten because it turned out that Lao was much better than him. In the end he lost the bet and had to pay money that he couldn't possibly afford, especially since his account had been blocked by his father. In the evening, Lin Yao looked worried as he walked through the village thinking about his fate. Not long after, a man claimed to be Li Baimi appeared. It turned out that this man had been watching Lin Yao since he won the Kung Fu tournament. 
he told Lin Yao that Lao had tricked him. Apart from that, he also conspired with Qin and Zheng. Qin pretended to kill Zheng so that Lin Yao would feel worried and willing to do anything for her. Li Baimi then invited him to confront Lao. Li Baimi said that he was also a martial arts expert like Lin Yao, so he hoped he could be good friends with him. Meanwhile, Lao was celebrating his success in tricking Lin Yao. He thanked Qin and Zheng who had acted very well. But amid the fun, they were surprised by the arrival of Lin Yao and Li Baimi. Lin Yao, who was initially doubtful, immediately felt hurt when he saw that the woman he liked had really deceived him. But somehow he seemed to still believe in her even though he had been tricked. He was sure that Qin was forced to follow Lao and Zheng's orders, who were the owner of the brothel, and to free her from the trap of the two. Lin Yao challenged Lao to a duel in public where if he won, then Lao had to let Qin go, whereas if he lost, then all his family's assets could be owned by Lao. Hearing the tempting offer, Lao immediately accepted the challenge. The next day, Lin Yao waited for Lao in the arena, but strangely, Lao just grinned under the arena. Unexpectedly, it turned out that he didn't want to fight because he had sent a martial arts expert who was none other than Li Baimi. Finally, Lin Yao realized that Li Baimi was Lao's boss, and he had been watching him because he wanted to seize his family's wealth. Though he was tricked, Lin Yao would continue the fight in a manly manner. Unfortunately, Li Baimi turned out to be much stronger than him, and like it or not, he had to accept the defeat. At night, Lin Yao was treated by his father. Even though he was a controlling father, Lin Jingtang cared about Lin Yao, especially because he was the only one he had after the death of his wife ten years ago. Amid the treatment, Li Baimi came to evict them because after Lin Yao lost the battle, he had the rights to the property. But what made Lin Yao hurt was that it turns out that Lin Zi was also involved in a plan where he was told to incite Lin Yao into the trap to be close with Qin. The man he considered as a brother had betrayed him. Lin Zi said that he was tired of being an errand boy in the family, and all this time, he felt jealous of Lin Yao who always got whatever he wanted, while he had lived in poverty since childhood. Instead of being a servant forever, he chose to side with Li Baimi, who was able to give him a lot of money. Hearing all this, Lin Jingtang was furious, but he didn't blame his son at all. He instead slapped his own face because he felt incompetent in raising his son. After that, Lin Jingtang told Lin Yao to get ready to leave. As a person with principles, he had to give up all his wealth. Before leaving, Lin Yao promised Qin that he would free her one day. He still believed that the woman was a good person. Long story short, he and his father went out of town to look for a place to live. Even though his son was guilty, Lin Jingtang didn't bring up about it all during the journey, and of course, this made Lin Yao feel even more guilty. He then knelt and apologized to his father because he had been a burden throughout his life. On the other hand, Li Baimi had completely controlled the Lin family's house. He then told Lao and the other to follow Lin Yao and Lin Jingtang and kill them because he was sure that they would return to the house. Qin did not agree with the plan because Lin Yao and his father had suffered enough. But unfortunately, Li Baimi instead sent her to kill them both, and so that she wouldn't be considered a traitor, she was forced to carry out that task. Qin was accompanied by Zheng, who was in charge of watching her. Both then went towards the route taken by Lin Yao. Apart from that, they also wore masks so that they wouldn't be recognized. When Lin Yao saw the two people who were about to attack him, he signaled his horse to take his father away because he didn't want to endanger his father, and after that, he immediately faced Qin. Amid the battle, Qin suddenly stopped and opened her mask. She then gave Lin Yao a chance to escape. She did that as an expression of thanks for his sincerity all this time. She stabbed the knife into her stomach because she felt it was not appropriate to continue living. Of course, this made Zheng mad because Qin had disobeyed Li Bingyi's orders. As a result, he decided to kill her and Lin Yao. After kicking them into a ravine, Zheng told Li Baimi that he was very sure that Lin Yao and Qin had died. Lin Zi, who overheard this, felt very guilty about his decision because after all, Lin Yao was the only friend he had. The next day, Lin Yao and Qin turned out to be still alive. They had been saved by Lin Jingtang. Lin Yao hadn't been conscious in the last eight hours. In his dream, he remembered how he fell into a ravine with Qin and that he had to face wild animals who were ready to pounce. Even though he was seriously injured, he was still able to look after Qin. When he woke up, he was very shocked because his father was sitting next to him. It turned out that he and Qin had been taken to his aunt's house which was located in a remote place. He seemed worried about Qin's safety, but his father assured him that Qin was fine. 
On the other hand, Lin Zi was seen looking for employees to work for Lei Beimi. At first he was criticized by the residents because he had betrayed Lin Jingtang, especially since most of them were Lin family loyalists. But when Lin Zi offered a salary three times the minimum wage, finally the residents were willing to work for Lei Beimi. Meanwhile, Lin Yao was being scolded by his aunt for making his family go bankrupt, especially because he was still willing to trust a woman like Qin, whom he didn't know at all. His aunt suggested that Lin Yao learn from a Kung Fu master so he could repay Li Beimi for what he had done. Shortly after, he was approached by a beggar who had once he given him some money. At first he thought that the beggar was a Kung Fu master in disguise, but it turned out he was just a regular beggar who wanted to ask for money because he had just lost from gambling. Not long after that, Lin Yao saw a fighter named Bao that he had beaten in a tournament. But this time, Bao looked more confident after finding out that Lin Yao had gone bankrupt. To avenge his defeat at that time, he immediately invited Lin Yao to a duel. Unexpectedly, Bao was able to beat Lin Yao very easily. He then said a very painful fact that all this time, Lin Jingtang had paid all fighters on purpose to give in so that Lin Yao could become the number one fighter in his area even though Lin Yao's abilities were very limited. Hearing this, he was very devastated. When Lin Yao was about to get beaten, his aunt showed up and beat Bao. Lin Yao looked disappointed at his father who had been making him look like a loser. By paying the fighters, his father made him look ridiculous in front of people. At this point, he didn't know who to trust anymore because everyone had lied to him, 